Hi everyone, welcome to unit nine of the semester. This is a unit where we're going to talk about office space and equipment. And I find myself in a really interesting place making this recording for you because so much of what we have talked about all semester has to be seen through the lens of how our work lives have changed because of the pandemic. And we speak about this in so many areas of our lives. We speak about our personal lives, you know, even going to and from the grocery store, traveling, seeing family and holidays. We talk about what life was like before. We talk about life now. And when we refer to what life will be like when the pandemic is quote unquote over. But we all know that we're not just flipping a switch and the pandemic is suddenly over and we're returning to everything being exactly it was it was pre-pandemic. And part of that is because, of course, of the, the rollout of vaccines and the health of our and safety of our community. It's not like we're flipping a switch and suddenly pandemic is over. But in other areas, it's because we've made adjustments to our lives because of the pandemic. And the one that is foremost in my mind, and I think for some, but not everyone watching this PowerPoint right now, is our, our work lives have changed because of the pandemic. And we also see that in the context of a physical law office space. So I make this PowerPoint for you today, knowing that we are in a period of transition. And so what was covered and what is covered in the chapter of your book was all written before a pandemic. But now we see it through the lens of how our lives are currently undergoing changes. And where we will be in six months, a year from now, five years now, it's really hard to say what our office space will look like. But at the core of whatever that physical space looks like, if we have people working at home, if we have people working in a building, what doesn't really change are the basic needs of a law office to run its business and the ethical obligations that we owe to our clients when we do our work. So I'll refer to that in the PowerPoint as well, just as we're talking about what our lives will look like. So I start off with an overview, which is to say that, again, until the pandemic, spending money on physical law office space was right up there with employee salaries as the highest amount on a budget item of what a law firm had to spend to keep its operations running was the salaries of all the employees and the needs of a physical office space. It should surprise no one that office space in large cities like Boston or New York City can be very expensive per square foot. The more you move into the suburbs, the price goes down. But even then, there are a lot of needs and we can't just set up office where we want. So let's talk about some of the needs that the law office has and we'll see why physical space is so critical, but also why it ended up being something so expensive. Okay, so I had to include slides like this because I think when we think the office space, the physical law office, we think about this. We think about needing law books and a place to read the law, write about it, potentially some quiet space that looks pretty somber and serious. I don't know how many of you like the movie The Firm, but I was trying to find images of lawyers working in a law office and there weren't as many as I would have liked, but I picture something like Tom Cruise in The Firm, where he's surrounded by a lot of large books and he's sitting at this big mahogany desk. And again, it has this air of seriousness to it. So I think when we think law firm and law office space, this is what comes to mind. Not the kitchen tables where many of us are doing our work right now and not shared collaborative space that a lot of law offices were moving towards even before the pandemic. So this is what I think is the most critical slide for us to focus on. I know I put a lot on here, but so I'm gonna go through each one of these. What are our law office needs? And again, think about this not from a pandemic, non-pandemic perspective. Think about this from the delivery of services that we are providing. What kind of needs do we have? Well, we need workspace, right? We need a place where we can put a computer that is connected to reliable and secure Wi-Fi internet access. So anybody working in a law firm now, we need a computer and we need a desk where we can do that work. We need quiet workspace because a lot of us need to 
do research and writing. And we need that time to reflect and have an opportunity to do that where it's not hustle and bustle and loud and a lot of other activities going on. So we need some space that is private offices for quiet workspace. We also need some private secure space because if we're meeting one-on-one -on -one with clients, we have attorney client communications to think about that we're not going to be standing in the middle of let's say a foyer or in front of an elevator you know, bay in order to have our client conferences. We need quiet space from that for that. We also need cubicles because they provide an easier space for open workflow. What about conference rooms? Conference rooms are used frequently by law offices for something as simple as, let's say, a conference, maybe potentially meeting with a client, often happens in a conference room and not in an attorney's office for lots of reasons. Again, first of all, some attorneys are very messy. Shh, don't say that I said that or cluttered office space, but also there could be other attorney client matters sitting out on our desk. And if a client is coming in, we would have to sanitize the whole area to prevent inadvertent disclosure of other client communications. But also in a conference room, it's clean, everything's neatly organized. You can bring coffee or snacks to that person while you're sitting in the conference room easier than you can in your private office space. We also use conference rooms to hold depositions or interview witnesses. So conference space is a pretty typical requirement for a law office. In fact, many law offices have available more than one conference room. Some are small, maybe to accommodate two, three, four people. Others would be larger to accommodate maybe up to 15 to 20 people. I've already mentioned computers. We know computers are a necessity in all aspects of our lives at this point. So we need computers and we need reliable internet access, we need printers. So when we think about printers, we also think about a place to keep printer paper and toner and ink and all of the stuff that goes along with having a computer and a printer, we need the support for that. I personally have experienced this phenomenon since we have been working at home where I realized that as much as I'm saving money on gas to drive, I feel like I'm spending that money on paper and ink so that I can use my home printer when I need to. And in fact, I've even begun trying to not print many documents at all because it can be very, um, ink can be very expensive, which I always knew, but I didn't really go through much of it when I was going into the office. Now I'm highly cognizant of it, but it highlights the point of what our needs are to do our jobs. We also still have a fair amount of paper files. Even though, and we will discuss in this week's assignment and discussion board, the idea of virtual law offices and working remotely, as much as we try, we still have a lot of papers in the law office. So in fact, it will continue to talk about records management in future units, but we can't get away from that. So our needs include a way to keep paper files in an organized fashion. Again, this amount is reduced over time. And again, not necessarily because of the pandemic, but just because electronic resources are better than they were a decade ago. Maybe we don't need as many filing cabinets, but we still need access to paper files. What about a law library? Many law firms keep in-house in their law office a paper, physical with books, law library. And this is something really interesting that has evolved over time. Again, not just because of the pandemic, but just because the electronic resources have become better and less expensive, that the need for keeping a physical law office is not what it was a decade ago. But a decade ago, you would walk into a law office that was you know, not a sole practitioner, but even a small law office, and there would be dedicated space in the law office itself for a law library. And the books would line the shelves, and usually the law firm would maintain a subscription to the local reporter and the local statute, and maybe even a secondary source like mass practice series or some other treatises. So at a minimum, there would be some shelves for books. This ties back to the need of that physical space. Then in addition to having workspace like cubicles and private offices and conference rooms, law offices would dedicate a whole room 
to a law library, often with a conference table in the middle of the space so that attorneys could come there and do their work by looking at the books and have quiet space in the law firm's library as well. So this posed an issue for for law firms because part of paying rent and needing that physical space included the need for the physical law office, the, the library itself. Again, now that the electronic resources are better and less expensive, a lot of law firms are actually getting rid of their books because it does cost money to keep those books. So it costs money in two ways to keep the books. Number one, you have to keep the books updated. So you pay for the books to constantly be updated because we know the law changes. But the other issue is that you need physical space for those books. So you could, as a law firm, lower your physical needs and therefore lower your rent by not needing a physical law office. But it ties back to what I said before, which is that we would need that access through reliable computers, reliable Wi-Fi, and potentially subscriptions to services like Westlaw or LexisNexis or MCLE or another way to access that same research, but electronically. So I keep library is still a law office need, even if we don't need the physical library itself anymore. We as practitioners, practitioners in the legal field need access to that research and that current research. Second to last and last, I absolutely included other law office needs, mailing and copying room, and of course a kitchen and bathroom. I'll skip to the last one, kitchen and bathroom. You really need, if you have a physical law office space, I don't need to explain that to you guys, but if you're thinking about looking for law office space, if you are ever involved with a search for finding office space, you want to think about where and how clients access bathrooms, where and how you access the bathrooms, having a kitchen that is a sufficient size to provide a place for employees to have meal breaks, usually a refrigerator, a microwave, potentially a toaster, Um, usually one of those fancy like Keurig coffee machines so you can make coffee for clients coming in and for yourself. So those would be the kitchen and bathroom is stuff to think about for your actual in-person physical law office. If you're working from home or working remotely, you do need to provide those yourselves. I think we've all figured that one out. But I do want to come back to mailing and copying. I put this right there with the needs of the library and the computer. It doesn't matter where you are working. We still use mail for the law office. We still send out official documents by US mail, by FedEx. And again, a lot of it might be moving electronically, but we need a way to send and receive mail. We need a way to make photocopies. I mean, anything from simply the client comes in and brings you documents that you want to make a copy of, we need a method to make those copies or scan them to save them electronically. So we need a copier that can handle mass production. If we need to make multiple copies of something to send out to many clients or many people working on a matter, we need a way to do that. So again, even in small physical law offices, there will be dedicated space to the mail coming in, mail going out and sorting, copying and having that office space for those just general office needs to be run. Larger law offices, and they don't have to be super large, but even 10, 20 attorneys will likely have a dedicated employee to handling mail and copying because the volume can be a lot. And you, we've talked about meeting deadlines and calendaring in the law. And so having a dedicated employee to open the mail and pass it to the right person in the law firm is critical. If you're in a small office, it might be a receptionist or secretary sharing those duties to open the mail and disperse it where it needs to go. Depends on the size of the law firm. But I hope you can see that the focus here is not so much on, am I in a physical location or am I at home? The needs of the law office don't change. But clearly what has changed is how we access this information and how we get it not the fact that we need it. I have just one more quick slide. And instead of creating a whole new PowerPoint, I just want to direct you to the part in your book that if you're in a physical law office, you do want to be aware with the ADA, Americans with Disabilities Act requirements. 
And last but not least, I'm going to post for you ABA Formal Opinion 482, all about preparing for disasters. Okay, thank you.